Molly, let's go back to Hotsaram Air Base, where Trey Yingst is outside awaiting those 13 hostages after they are released at the Egypt border. They will fly to you. Trey, what can you tell us? What's the latest? Yeah, Griff, a lot of anticipation right now across Israel about these 13 hostages women and children among the first large group that will be released by Hamas. Palestinian media at this hour is reporting the hostages are on the move. We've not been able to independently confirm that, but it would align with the timing in all of this. They will head to Egypt's Rafah crossing in the custody of the Red Cross. They'll then be transferred into Egypt, where they will then cross back into Israel. Now, how they will get to Hatzarim Air Base, we're not exactly sure of yet. There are two major options here that have been discussed in Israeli media and by officials. One is by helicopter. We saw images of a helicopter being prepared earlier today. And the other is by a small bus. They want to make sure they can evaluate these hostages when they are safely back in Israeli hands, make sure they're giving them what they need, and not put these small children in a situation where they will be scared by a helicopter or loud noises. They even have noise-canceling headphones for them and sunglasses because they've been held so long in rooms or even underground. They want to just make sure that they're comfortable. We are learning also at this hour that in addition to the 13 women and children that will come out in this first group as part of this four-day ceasefire agreement brokered by the Qataris, there is a parallel agreement that is going to allow 12 Thai hostages to come out of Gaza today, released by Hamas as part of a separate negotiation. Now, these hostages were taken into Gaza also on October 7th, many of them workers that were in the small communities along the border with Gaza. So an indication that 25 people total, if this all goes through, could get out of Gaza today as part of these two parallel deals. Griff, Molly? Trey, you, you talked about, you know, the two options. Will they be flown? Will they be driven in a bus? Just orient for our viewers, if you will, the proximity to Hotsarum Air Base where you are and where the expected release of these hostages is taking place at the Egyptian border. Yeah, great question. So I want you to visualize a map of Israel. And in the southwest corner, you have the border with the Gaza Strip, and then you have the Gaza Strip. On the southern part of the Gaza Strip, you have the Rafah crossing. This is the second largest crossing. It's the crossing between Egypt and Gaza. And so they will be released into the hands of the Red Cross there. They'll cross into Egypt, and then they will head east with the Red Cross. This will be all monitored by the Israelis. They'll cross into Israel through a crossing that's normally used actually to evaluate trucks and, and it's a security crossing for goods. They will come into Israel, and at that moment, the decision will be made based on the condition of these hostages to either fly them to Hatsarim Air Base, where we're at right now, or drive them. This is an air base that sits outside of the southern Israeli city of Beersheba. Beersheba is a large community in southern Israel. It's a place quite close to the Gaza border. It takes about an hour to drive from the Gaza border to this location. And then from here, they'll either go by ambulance or to helicopters. And they'll, and they'll be taken to regional hospitals. The bottom line here is the Israeli officials want to make this as comfortable as possible for the hostages. We understand that they will have a soldier assigned to every individual hostage. The soldiers are all women, from what we understand. They want to ensure that they're not uh, putting these, these vulnerable mothers and children in a situation where they would feel any additional fear than what they've already experienced, the true hell on earth over the past nearly 50 days being held inside Gaza. And when they get to the further medical treatment, they will have psychologists and they will also have doctors around the clock making sure that they are okay. I'm just getting a note from my producer right now. According to Israeli media, the hostages are now with the Red Cross. So again, they're not yet in Israel, but they're with the Red Cross. This means the plan is moving forward as expected. They'll go into the hands of the Red Cross, where we understand, according to Israeli media, they are right now. That update just coming in. They then will be delivered into Israeli custody, and they'll be able to make phone calls once they arrive here at the Hatsarim Air Base to loved ones. Also, something to note, Israeli media already reporting that family members have been notified. We don't have the names of these hostages yet. Later in the day, we will. But those family members have been notified. They are on the way to the hospitals now in central Israel. It is going to be just a moment of relief for the entire population here that truly has experienced a collective trauma, but also for these family members that have just been waiting for nearly seven weeks for any information about their children and their loved ones.
Significant news there, Trey. The hostages on the move now in the hands of the Red Cross as this plays out. The truce that went into motion at midnight, essentially, here in the East Coast now has been holding for some nine hours. But I just want to ask you one big uh, picture question, Trey, because we spoke with Shahara Zani, the former Israeli consulate spokesperson, uh, a few minutes ago, and he said, look, make no mistake, when this process is over, it does not detour the Israeli government and Prime Minister Netanyahu's ultimate goal of eradicating Hamas. Yeah, absolutely. And look, the bottom line for the Israelis is that they've made very clear once this ceasefire is over, they will go back pushing forward with their military plans inside the Gaza Strip. I just want to give you some color from inside Gaza. I've been talking with civilians today who are inside, and they say this is a moment of relief for the more than 2 million Palestinians who are living under Hamas rule still in the southern part of the Strip. And now that the Israeli air and ground campaign has been paused, they're in the streets. They're going to some markets and even some images of Palestinians going to the beach today just to have a moment of, of, of clarity and a moment of relief because there are so many civilians there who have been caught amid this war. With that said, Israeli officials, and we were with military officials and soldiers inside the Gaza Strip just a couple days ago getting a first-hand look at these battles. They say they are remaining on high alert. They understand that this lull in fighting could be an opportunity for Hamas and Islamic Jihad to reorganize, to move assets and weapons to different parts of Gaza using the tunnel network beneath the Strip so that they're prepared when this ceasefire ends to start ambushing Israeli forces again, to continue the battle. And remember, the estimates are just a few thousand Hamas fighters have been killed since this war began nearly seven weeks ago. There are tens of thousands that remain, and that's not counting the leadership that has now moved to southern cities like Khan Yunus and Rafah, the second and third largest cities, respectively, in Gaza, where they are now holed up in tunnels, in shelters, in bunkers. And so it's critical to talk about this here, because when we look at the big picture, we are looking at a temporary pause in the fighting. It is a pause that will bring much relief to the civilian population on both sides of the fence. And hopefully, as we have reported here, 13 Israeli hostages at least coming home today and then more to follow with a total of 50 if this does go forward. But the fighting will resume four days from now if the extension is not put into place and more hostages are released, Israel will resume their air and ground campaign against Gaza with two major goals. Those goals and are to find the rest of the hostages and bring them home and destroy Hamas leadership. Griff, Molly? And Trey, talk to us just for a moment about the fighting as you so well uh, laid out there, because in the northern part of the Gaza Strip, you have Gaza City. That's where you did incredible reporting in the tunnels. But Khan Yunus, the southernmost city where you say a lot of the fight may go, how will that fighting differ perhaps to the, what we've seen in the north? Look, largely we've discussed Gaza City as being a Hamas stronghold. The Israeli military early in the war told us they believed 80 percent of Hamas fighters and leadership was in Gaza. Well, the majority have moved to the south now, understanding that Israeli forces have spent weeks operating in the northern part of the Strip. They have many neighborhoods completely locked down. They are going block by block with tanks and APCs and infantry troops to secure that area. But remember the leader of the military wing of Hamas, the man behind all of this, responsible for organizing and carrying out the October 7th massacre, Yahya Sinwar. He's known as the Butcher of Khan Yunus, Gaza's second largest city, and he is believed to be in Khan Yunus right now with fighters in that network of tunnels beneath the ground preparing for the battle ahead. And so when we look at the days and weeks ahead, we are looking at a difficult battle for Israeli forces. Remember, they've told more than 2 million civilians to evacuate to the southern part of the Strip. The United Nations estimates nearly 80 percent of Gazans are internally displaced, and they are now in the southern part of Gaza. And so Israel has to look at their map and their plan right now, and they're going to use these four days to do so to figure out what comes next and how they are going to operate in that heavily populated area to go after Hamas leadership. Griff, Molly. Trey Yingst on the ground in Hatsum Air Base, where Fox News has now confirmed hostages are on their way. Trey will check back in with you as news breaks.